before I start this video, I want to tell you in the interests of transparency that I'm doing some paid rule summary work for Mythic Games. And they've also given me some freebies now again. Of course, I never let that kind of stuff change my personal opinions. Right, let's get on with the video. Welcome fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and let me tell you a tale. A tale of Joan of Arc. A story almost as epic as that of the Hundred Years' War. Yep, today something very exciting has happened. I've received my box for Joan of Arc 1.5. Here's the original Joan of Arc stuff that I've had and what an epic, epic journey we've had from the start when Mythic Games launched this game on Kickstarter. Let me tell you a little bit about it and my personal journey towards getting so much Joan of Arc stuff. First, let's talk about the original campaign for Joan of Arc. It happened on October 2017. It hit Kickstarter and I immediately was excited by it. Uh, it was a mass battle game set in a fantasy version of the Hundred Years War featuring, of course, Joan of Arc herself. All that historical stuff and you could play in two different ways historically and with supernatural elements right up my alley absolutely wonderful stuff so i did quite a bit of backing i didn't back everything but i got the core set i got the apocalypse set and i got the siege set and here it all is here now i have played joan of arc um probably let me think probably about six times and I think it's a great game. I'm going to say that right up front. It's fantastic. Uh, the only problem is, is that every time I played it, I had to go through a whole lot of FAQs and erratas and everything to check that I had the optimum version of the game scenario that I was playing. And there were often errors in the original stuff that was released. Now, I got my set in August 2019, which was two years after the launch of the Kickstarter. So it took a long time to arrive. And I remember at the time I was horrified by the amount of shipping it cost. These days it doesn't seem so much, but back then it was the most expensive shipping that I'd ever paid for something. But look at it all, there's a lot here. And there was an extra box too, which I managed to pack into these ones. So let's have a quick look at the stuff inside this box, because it's really impressive and you get a lot of stuff. Now the funny thing is, is that I got this about two and a half years ago now, and I've been waiting for the new stuff so I could pack this prop properly and make a foam core insert for the whole thing. So I haven't yet done that. I've thrown all this together in one go. I've got the apocalypse, the rule book, the scenario book, everything together in this box. Uh, and then I've used these for temporary storage. Now for the order markers, I've got these very nice little plastic order markers and I've painted those in the right colors. So they're great little markers. And uh, I've painted all the trees, great little trees. Um, some more counters, storing these temporarily in these. Uh, let's have a look what we have here. Got a heap of bases. And you can see I've started making some foam core inserts for all the different cards. But of course most of these cards will be replaced by those that are coming in this uh, 1.5 upgrade. All the various cards. Main play board of course. And then I've made a bottom foam core insert here which holds all the terrain tiles, um, certainly for the core set anyway. And a few extra bits here. These are the original cubes you use for uh, order tokens, though I prefer those plastic ones. Dice. Uh, so that's how I've got my core set packed. And I've only played games with this core set yet. And as I said, I really enjoy the game. The scenarios are great when they work. Um, and uh, the whole design concept of the game is excellent. Up to this point I've been storing my miniatures in this separate box. They all go pretty nicely in there but I'll come up with some foam core way of storing them in the uh, actual core box. But uh, you can see I've already done quite a bit of painting and this has been enough painting to get me through uh, quite a few scenarios so far. Uh, one of the good things, of course, is that you don't have to paint all of Joan of Arc in one go. You can just paint it scenario by scenario, uh, making sure that you've got enough figures. Once you've done about this many, you're going to be covered for, for quite a few. So you just have to get through that initial uh, batch. Now, you can put various uh, things on the bases to mark them as red and blue. I'm just uh, actually painting the edges like that. And then I just attach the uh, different models onto the bases with a little piece of blue tack so they stay on there nice and securely. And that seems to work well. Next up I've got the Apocalypse box. 
And I haven't touched this one yet, except to sort of uh, throw it all into the right bags and things. So I've got heaps of miniatures here to paint, as you can see. Lots and lots and lots. These are all the Apocalypse ones. So this part of Joan of Arc really takes you into that kind of medieval uh, end of world revelations uh, apocalypse kind of battles which is really interesting. Uh, some huge models that come with it. You can see this mammoth looking thing, which is, it's just a doorstop, isn't it? It's fantastic. Uh, looking forward to painting these one day. Still haven't got around to it. The other monster that came with this is this huge multi-headed beast. Look at the size of that. I mean, this is going to be amazing once I paint it. I've just got to get around to painting it. So as you can see, heaps of things to do in there and lots of miniatures. And the miniatures are great. They're very detailed. They're hard plastic. They're really high quality. Next up, we've got Siege. Now, I really couldn't resist this one because it's got castle walls and siege mechanics in it. And for this one, because it's kind of self-contained as a siege module for the game, I did build a foam core insert for it. So uh, I've got all the counters in here. Uh, this piece comes out, as you can see. We've got trebuchets and things like that, ruined walls, uh, fences, etc. And then in the bottom, look at all that. Now, I really do have to paint this because this will look amazing. You've got towers, you've got walls, um, these are a couple of the buildings from the core set that I've stored in here. As you can see, they look great once they're painted up. Um, this, one, this one's also from the core set, the church. So don't they look great once they've got some paint on them? Um, there's also an entire inn. Beautiful. I mean, of course, the only problem with these is that they are in the small scale of this game. I love this kind of small scale. I used to love playing um, Epic 40,000 by Games Workshop that was in a small scale as well, so it really appeals to me. The only problem is, of course, you can't use it for other games because it's smaller in scale. But really, um, lovely detailed stuff, beautiful miniatures, and uh, wow, so much painting to be done there. Which brings us finally to today's delivery. So, after Joan of Arc, the original campaign, was a huge success, Mythic decided to run a 1.5 campaign for all the people who missed out on the original campaign and also as a chance to fix up some of those problems that uh, slipped through the cracks the first time around. They also have added a Teutonic Knights expansion. I didn't get that. I thought I had enough stuff already, as you can see. Um, but one thing that I did um, fall prey to temptation with was the giant dragon, which hopefully is inside this box. I couldn't resist, it's a huge dragon. I thought, well, one chance to get something so impressive. So I put myself down for one of those. Now that 1.5 campaign, uh, that ran in October 2019. Um, I backed it in September of the next year. I waited quite a while and here it is today. So both campaigns have taken about two years to arrive. Now the 1.5 campaign was delayed because there was an IP dispute with the original designer of the game, Pascal Bernard. Uh, that has been sorted. We've only just found out, unfortunately, though, that's the end of Joan of Arc for Mythic. Because the original designer is taking back his IP and uh, Mythic won't be able to produce any more stuff with the Joan of Arc brand. So, after, what, four years? When did it all start? October 2017. So, yeah, just about, just over four years. The Joan of Arc epic is over. But I've got... So much stuff for this game. It's insane. I will be playing it till the apocalypse. There's so much stuff. And I'll be painting it until the apocalypse as well. So I don't feel hard done by that the campaign has come to an end. I do think it's a shame that some people are still complaining about the fact that there are errors. By this stage, we should have seen all the errors worked out. They've had plenty of time to do that. So, you know, I'm going to be a little bit harsh and say that all those little kinks should have been worked out. By the same token, of course, this is a huge mammoth campaign with so many moving parts. And as someone who works as a graphic designer in the board game industry, I know how easily errors can slip through. What I think, and I think a lot of other people think this as well, 
Companies should leverage the popularity of their, their games. They have a big fan base out there and a lot of people willing to do a lot of free work. So if you're having problems with things like proofreading, you could put, a, for example, a rules document on the internet and open it up to the public and they could come back with all the things that they find. And the public have been doing that. Whether that's worked into Mythic's uh, quality control methods is another thing entirely. But why not use that fantastic resource to make sure that every single bug is quashed? Anyway, all board games have bugs. There's always something wrong and we just get on and play the games and enjoy them. So let's have a look inside this big box and see what we've got. Well, we've got a bag of some more of those plastic order tokens. That's pretty cool with some sticker sheets. I didn't like the sticker sheets. I just painted mine flat colors. I found that better. Well, here's the new rule book, and then we've got a big hardcover scenario collection book. So let's have a look at that, that in a moment. We've got a lot of cards here. These are presumably replacement ones, so I'll have to go through all my existing cards. Uh, a couple of counters for something. More dice. Absolutely essential. More dice. Um, I was hoping to... I think this is just an extra dice pack. One of the problems with the core set is it didn't have enough of these dice. I'm very, very happy to see more of those. Now I'm proud to say I've had a Joan of Arc rule summary and reference out for a long, long time. And in fact, my uh, battle report was the first fully painted battle report available on the net as well. So I've been a supporter of Joan of Arc really since the very early days. Uh, this is the new rule book. Of course, my rule summary and reference is updated already for this new rule book. Here's the big scenario collection book. And I really didn't realize this was going to be in hardcover, uh, but I mean, there is so much stuff here, isn't there? Really, when are you going to get around to playing all this? It's quite amazing. It's, you know, we're all complaining about the fact that it's the end of Joan of Arc, but are you really going to need more? I really don't think you will. Uh, this will be enough to keep you going forever. However, um, that's disappointing. My book is damaged. Anyway, these things happen. That's just a bit of bad luck. A um, bit of a shame there. Anyway. Now the actual upgrade set itself is much smaller than I was expecting. There's only this much stuff, so uh, I just have to go through my original cards, and I very carefully place them in two different piles. Put my, um, you know, my old cards on the right, my new cards on the left, and I slowly go through them one by one and replace them if I have replacements there. That's just how you do it. Now, here's my dragon. It's another huge box. I didn't realise it'd be so big. But look at that. Oh, that way around. There it is, the legendary dragon. Let's have a look inside this. So here's the legendary dragon, which is the, the extra treat I got for myself. Um, that's our French rule book. Now English rules. You see there's one, two. You know, it's funny, just getting this dragon, there's only two scenarios. There might be some more in the big book, I'm not sure, but well, it's um it is an indulgence, I must admit. But there you go. Uh, we've got a few sheets of tiles. And then the rest, I presume, is the dragon itself. Wow. Okay. Look at this. Well, my friends, that is the biggest miniature I have in my collection. It is huge. That is just the body. So if we take the... These are definitely going to have to be pinned in some way, but they're huge. Wow. Oh, look. look, they just fit. That's good. They just fit in there. Nice solid joints, which is good to see. Well, look at that. It's absolutely mammoth. Now, keep in mind, let's keep the scale in mind. Here's a little person. So, how would you be? That really would be terrifying. Look, he just about fits in that mouth there. Swallowed in one go. That is huge. Look at the wingspan. It's mammoth. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to store this thing, especially if I attach the wings properly and, and do a bit of, uh, put a bit of putty around there. It'll just have to remain on permanent display, getting dusty. Wow. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's, it's big. It's very, very, very big and very impressive. And really, you know, when you think about dragons, dragons should be pretty big, shouldn't they? So that is, uh, wow, that is a big dragon. So remember,
of my friends, for those of you lamenting the end of Joan of Arc, yes, it is a shame, but also ask yourself, why would you possibly want any more Joan of Arc? This is going to take up so much space in my collection, it's just crazy. But the good news is, it's an excellent game. There's so much to explore here, and I'm looking forward to getting into it. Yes, we're going to come across the occasional error, proofreading problem, misprint. These things happen in all our games, let's face it. We have waited a long time for this one. It's been a four-year saga. And, um, you know, I for one, I'm kind of strangely glad that the Joan of Arc thing is, is pretty much over. Because it's been going on for a long, long time, and now we can just sort of relax, sit back, do some painting, and just enjoy the game, and stop worrying about um, when the next errata and everything is coming out. As with all games, here's my tip, just roll a dice and get on with the fun. Of course, the unfortunate thing is, if you just have a little bit of Joan of Arc and you really get into it and want more, it's going to be probably expensive to buy these things on eBay later on, as the scalpers get hold of them and start selling them off. But again, even with just the core set, you've got a lot of replayability. Well, thanks very much for watching, everybody. This is uh, Peter, also known as Universal Head, from the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Please be sure to go and check out my rule summary and reference for Joan of Arc. It's on my website at orderofgamers.com, and it will make playing all this a lot easier, I can tell you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit all notifications for all the latest new videos from the Esoteric Order of Gamers. And follow me on social media for all the new stuff. Have a wonderful holiday season, everybody. Stay safe, enjoy yourself, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.